Hey everybody, what I've got here is the brand new Lionel 3 rail O-Scale Pennsylvania Legacy L1 and we're going to check it out right now on Eric's Trains. <laughs> So here's the box the new L1 came in and because this is an XMTH model this is a brand new model for Lionel so this should be pretty exciting. So I chose to get Pensy 1343 because it has the doghouse tender as you'll see in a moment. Model number is 2331021 Pensy Legacy L1 number 1343 and basically an on the water date of May 29th 2023. So to get this thing out of the box from my knife collection, we'll be using this guy. This is an ATAC AT101 Phantom VG10 steel. Very nice. It was funny when this thing came in, Brian at Legacy Station texted me and said, hey, the new L1s came in and he sent me the model number, but he sent me the wrong model number. It was the model number for the upcoming brass hybrid challenger and so i got all excited i was like oh the brass hybrid challengers are in uh, but then once i got to the store i was like oh okay that l1 <laughs> but i was still excited because as i said this is a brand new model for lionel so excited to see how they did with it there's the old box tag Basically the same info, Pensy, Legacy, L1, number 1343, Legacy and Bluetooth control, Legacy rail sounds, whistle steam, and 054 minimum curve. There's the instruction booklet. All right. Nice kind of mid-sized steam locomotive, not too big, not too small. I like that. And there that is. Looks great. Got little curtains around the cab. It's a very reassuring weight to it. All die cast metal, you can tell just holding it in the hand. Oh, I love that smell. You know, when you open up a new locomotive, that smell of new styrofoam and plastic, it hits you and it's just, oh gosh, just the best. It's like new car smell. Sometimes I think maybe part of the reason why I keep buying new locomotives is to get that new locomotive smell. It's kind of intoxicating in a way. So there's that tender again, a nice, nice weight to it. Two speakers. And there's that doghouse tender. Not all of the L1s have the doghouse tender. I chose to get one that did just because I think doghouse tenders are cool, but in case you don't know, that's a doghouse. It was a little shed where the brakeman could stay while the train was in operation kind of keep him out of the rain or snow or whatever all right so let's start things off with a little bit of history on the real thing so four score and seven years ago the l1s were a class of 282 mikado type steam locomotives that were used on the pennsylvania railroad during the early 20th century between 1914 and 1919 574 l1s were built by the pensy's own juniata shops as well as baldwin locomotive works and lima locomotive works Although the L1s were quite successful at first, they were eventually overshadowed by the decapods and the M1s, and in fact a large number of L1s were taken out of service during the years of the Great Depression. However, with the outbreak of World War II, the Pensy needed all the power it could get, and so most of those would return to service during the war. All L1s were eventually retired between 1948 and 1960, and all of them were scrapped except for one, number 520, which is currently on display at the Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania. 
Now, Lionel offered the new L1 in their 2022 Volume 2 catalog, and these were delivered just a few weeks ago in July of 2023. This is a new locomotive for Lionel, but it's not a brand new locomotive. It's one of the XMTH locomotives that Lionel bought from MTH a couple of years ago. However, they have changed it to meet their needs. They've kind of Lionelized it, for lack of a better term. They rip out all the MTH stuff and add all the legacy components and rail sounds and everything, and they also add whistle steam and the bicolor classification lights and all that kind of stuff that you'd expect. So while this thing started life out as an MTH steam locomotive, it is now a fully fledged Lionel legacy equipped steam locomotive. Now in that 2022 volume two catalog, Lionel offered six different versions of the L1. Most of them were Pensy, so they did Pensy number 496 and 4030. They did Pensy 1343, which is what we have here, and 1627. Both of those have the doghouse tender. They did Pensy 1369, Santa Fe 882, which has a custom-made brass tender. Then they did DTNI number 317 with a doghouse tender. And lastly, they did Lehigh in New England number 501. And then in addition to the separate sale L1s, Lionel also offered an L1 in one of their premium freight sets later in the catalog, the Cumberland Valley Way Freight set. That's a really cool set. I almost ordered one of those. So let's get some stats on this model. The length is right at... Oh, uh, just over 20 inches. We'll call it 20 and a quarter. And we'll get our scales here. So the locomotive weighs six pounds, right at six pounds, one ounce. The tender weighs two pounds, 13 ounces. And the combined weight of the locomotive and the tender, eight pounds, 13 ounces. Yeah, this is no lightweight. The minimum curve needed to operate this locomotive is 042. And when I measured the pulling power, it came in at two pounds, 10 ounces, which is actually pretty good for something this size. And for those of you who might be wondering how many cars you can pull with two pounds, 10 ounces, well, I found that generally speaking, it takes around 1.3 ounces to pull your average size O scale freight car or passenger car. So if we take two pounds, 10 ounces, that is 42 ounces and divide it by 1.3, we get around 32. I would probably round that figure down. So you could probably safely pull around 25 or 30 cars with this L1. Now that two pounds, 10 ounces of pulling power comes courtesy of one large flywheel motor that's in the locomotive. And then feature wise, you've got legacy control, legacy rail sounds, Bluetooth on board. There's a fan driven smoke unit for the smokestack and for the whistle steam smoke effect. Then you've got all LED lighting. There's a red firebox glow in the cab as well as interior illumination in the cab. There's also a light in the doghouse. Then you've got directional lighting for the headlight and backup light. And this model also has the bi-color classification light feature that allows you to change the colors of the classification lights on the front and rear of the locomotive. So on the front, you can go between green, white, or off. And on the back, you can go between red, white, or off. And now going in for some close-up shots, you can see the pilot area looks great. We've got this tank up here, a nice coupler cut bar with a chain going down through the dummy scale coupler. Now, if you want to double head this thing, you can swap out this dummy scale coupler for a dummy full-size O-gauge coupler that's included in the box when you purchase the locomotive. And then you can see we've got some hoses here and some suicide steps as well. And then above all that, we've got this nice little walkway with safety tread on it, which is very nice, and some add-on grab irons. And then we've got the front of the boiler with a number board there, add-on grab irons all around, an add-on dynamo. And then we've got an operational headlight with lighted number boards on either side and operating classification lights. Now, the front of the boiler does not open up like it does on typical Lionel steam locomotives. And I think it's that way because as I said, this is an XMTH steam locomotive and MTH steam locomotives typically didn't have the opening front on the boiler. Around the corner, you can see the start of the add-on handrails. We've got some piping here and then a legible builder's plate right there. And then check out that nice cylinder and all these drive wheels and drive gear. It all looks fantastic. And we've got lots of nice add-on pipes and so forth. Just looks great down here. And the area under the cab looks great as well. And that cab looks awesome. We've got two hand painted crew figures inside the cab. We do have opening windows on either side of the cab. And then in this rear view, you can see a nice curtain around the door, add on grab irons on either side. We've got some nice back head detail. And as I said earlier, the interior of the cab is illuminated and there's also a red glow in the firebox when the engine is in operation. Up on top, we've got the smokestack. And as I said, there is a fan driven smoke unit down in there. And as always, 
to add smoke fluid into the smoke unit, you simply pour your smoke fluid directly down the stack. And when you put smoke fluid down the stack, you are supplying smoke fluid not only for the smoke stack, but also for the whistle steam smoke effect. Got a nice looking sand dome here. And behind that, we've got a little brass bell. Looks great. And then we've got a steam dome and there is the little brass whistle and the hole for the whistle steam smoke effect is right here. So when you blow the whistle, steam shoots out of that hole and you get the illusion of steam shooting out of the whistle. And we've got a little wire lanyard going all the way back to the cab. Behind that, we've got these two little brass pop-off valves. And then on the cab roof, we've got this vent that you can open and close like that. And this is what the underside of the L1 looks like. We've got three pickup rollers for good center rail contact. There are traction tires on the last set of drivers to help with the pulling power. And then underneath this rear truck, we've got three switches. There's one here in the middle for Bluetooth on off. There's one over here to turn the smoke unit on and off. And then there's one over here that you can't see. That's the run program switch that you would use to program this locomotive into your legacy or TMCC or soon base three system. Here's a look at the gap between the engine and the tender. It's not bad. I wish there was a drop plate, but there isn't. But gap-wise, it's okay, especially for O-Gage. The tender for the L1 looks amazing. We've got this very crisp Pennsylvania across the side. Lots of nice rivet detailing, step detail, add-on grab irons on the sides. Die-cast metal trucks with chains coming off of them, which is really cool. And by the way, everything on this model is either die-cast metal, brass, or sheet metal. There's very little plastic on this thing. The top of the tender looks great right here. We've got a real coal load. And when I say real coal, I mean real coal. These are little bits of real coal that are glued up on top. And then we've got that great doghouse. It is lighted on the interior, as I said, and there's a little brakeman figure in there. And then on either side of the doghouse, we've got these water hatches that open up like that. And here's a look at the back. We've got the big electro coupler that can be fired from the legacy remote or your smartphone or what have you. Nice coupler cut bar metal ladder coming up the back, then we've got the operating classification lights and the operating backup light with lighted number boards on either side. And lastly, here's what the underside of the tender looks like. We've got two pickup rollers, one per truck. This is the sensor for the Lionel LCS sensor track if you choose to use one. We've got two speakers for the sound system here, and then we've got a little water scoop detail piece. All right, the last thing we're gonna do before we start this thing up is BFIMO. So for the L1, my pick for BFIMO is this thing is a great runner. I ran this thing for two hours straight the other day at slow as molasses crawl speeds and top speed on the legacy remote. And at all times it ran perfectly, never once derailed or caught on a switch or anything like that. Smooth as silk, great runner. All right, now comes the fun part. Let's crank this thing up. Train one break, man. Let's get an application for continuity test. Good application, okay to release. We have good set, good release, good continuity on timetable train number one. Over. Uh, that's a roger. Good set, good release, good continuity on timetable train number one. Out. That was a nice startup sequence. All right, let's check out the whistles first. It does come with five whistles. And it also comes with five bell tones. Here's the cylinder steam sound. Here's the sound of water being added to the tender. The water's full. Out. 
Here's the sound of coal being added to the tender. The coal's full. Out. And here's a little sampling of some of the crew talk sounds. Dispatcher, we're ready. Is it okay to pull? Over. Please stand by. Out. Switchless says we've got one off and three on at the head end. Car knockers heading your way. Make sure everything's good. Safeties are lifted. Ease off the coal till we get a signal. Ash pans are empty. Air test is good. Ready to pull. Dispatcher, we're ready. Is it okay to pull? Over. Take the green. Out.
We're going to Beans and call it a day. Out. All right, so there you have it, the new three-rail O-scale Pensy L1 from Lionel. This is a fantastic locomotive, and I'm so glad I picked one up. If you'd like to get one of these for yourself, the retail price is right at $950, except for the Santa Fe version. That one is right at $1,000, and that's because it has a custom-made brass tender just for that locomotive. Now, keep in mind, those are full retail prices. If you go through a good Lionel dealer, you should be able to get a decent discount off those retail prices. And and as always, if you're looking for a good Lionel dealer, try my favorite train store, which is Legacy Station. You can find them on the web at LegacyStation.com or give them a call at 770-339-7780. Now, if you'd like to support this channel, I would greatly appreciate it. That can be done through Patreon at Patreon.com slash Eric's Trains. Patreon supporters get access to all sorts of perks and benefits, and you can read about those benefits on my Patreon page. I'd like to put a big thank you out there to all of my current Patreon supporters. Your support means the world, not only to me, but to the future of this channel. And an extra super big thank you goes out to my premium tier Patreon supporters. You'll see their names at the end of this video. And lastly, if you'd like to buy some Eric's Trains merchandise, t-shirts, cell phone cases, coffee mugs, stuff like that, check out the Eric's Trains online store. If you look below this video, you should see some samples of some of the items I have in my store. If you click on one of those, it'll take you to my store and you can get whatever you want. Anyway, that's going to do it for now. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. I'm Eric Siegel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.